Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video in bonding and molecular structure. Bam! So today we're going to do the resonance structures of the acetate ion. Okay, we need to do a Lewis dot structure first, but before we do a Lewis dot structure, we need to know the formula for the acetate ion. So there is the acetate ion. So that's CH3, COO, and then the negative one charge. Okay, you might see the acetate ion written as C2, H3, O2 with the negative one charge also, although chemists always prefer this one, and the reason for that is because of this Lewis dot structure. So what I want you to do actually, is I want you to pause the video right here, and I want you to attempt to draw the Lewis dot structure for the acetate ion yourself, and then restart it. So here we are restarting. Okay, so a couple of things about that. You should see that this carbon here on the left-hand side of that formula has the three hydrogens attached to it. That's why they're on the left-hand side. Then the next carbon, the second carbon, is attached to that first carbon. That carbon, that second carbon, is attached to also two different oxygens. Okay, you should see that that top oxygen is doubly bonded. Okay, and then the, the oxygen on the right-hand side is a single bonded oxygen. You should see that there's brackets around this molecule with the negative one charge in the upper right-hand corner. So anytime you have a ion, you need the brackets and the charge in the upper right-hand corner. Now, I want you to pause and think to yourself and say, is there another way to draw this Lewis dot structure that would be valid as well? And the answer to this is yes, because we're on resonance structures, of course. So what I want you to do is look at this structure and think about those two oxygens. What if you had moved the double bond on the right-hand oxygen instead of the upper oxygen? So that's what we're going to do there is we're going to switch the double bond. So I've done that right here, and I still have the brackets. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a double-headed arrow in between every single resonant structure. That's showing you that they are like equivalent structures, if you will. Some of them might be, some of them might not be. Okay, these are equivalent resonance structures, and we actually do not need to use formal charge to determine which is the preferred uh, resonance structure of the set because they are equivalent. Because the formal charges are going to be the same on everything here. We're not going to do the formal charges on this example, but we'll do some on some other ones. Okay, this molecule is polar because one, it's asymmetrical. Okay. The other reason why that this is polar is because it has the charge of a negative one. So that lets you know that it's also polar anyway, even without it being asymmetrical. But it is most certainly asymmetrical, and that's okay to let you know that it's polar. Okay, that is the first resonance structure. That is a super simple one. We don't have to do too much for that one. Here's a crazy hat. Go Sounders. Go Seattle team. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'm going to see you next time. Bye now.